We're here to idea you, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, and create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has used ancient tree rings to reconstruct the climate records of North China. The shadows of ancient trees, towers mute, immense, bristling with sap-burnt memories. Sapphire light dances over withered rings, hieroglyphs from an age we burnt, bled, carved and grew. When molten heavens thundered and volcanic seas dissolved, mountains ghosted in cloud cathedrals sacred blue. Each ring appalls with the memory of Earth's contortions, amidst the scattered whispers of patient boughs. A clarion call to soothe the ocean's ebbing tides. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the Journal of Geographical Sciences, which has highlighted blue light reflections' crucial role in unveiling climate changes and linking global patterns. Over the last three decades, scientists have noticed that North China has become increasingly dry and warm, raising concerns about climate change in the region. However, understanding these climate patterns over the long term has been challenging. This difficulty arises from the scarcity of comprehensive climate data, especially those that could give insights into historical temperature changes. Traditional methods have struggled to provide a detailed picture of climate variability and its causes in North China highlighting a need for more innovative approaches to reconstruct historical temperatures and understand their impact. In response to this challenge, a team of researchers embarked on a groundbreaking study using 45 core samples from Myers spruce trees in North China to develop a 281-year record of late wood blue intensity, a novel method for studying past climates. They discovered that the reflection intensity of blue light from these samples, particularly during the warm season from May to August, is primarily influenced by the maximum temperatures, allowing them to trace back the climate conditions to as early as 1760 CE. Their analysis revealed several periods of unusually high and low temperatures over the past 261 years, providing a much clearer view of climate variability in North China. This work is significant not just for its innovative approach to climate reconstruction, but also because it links these historical climate patterns to broader climatic phenomena, such as sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. By doing so, the study suggests that the extremes of warm season temperatures in North China could become more pronounced with ongoing global warming, underlying the importance of understanding historical climate patterns to predict future changes. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. In the shadows of ancient trees, towers mute, immense, bristling with sap-burnt memories, sapphire light dances over weathered rings, hieroglyphs from an age we burnt, bled, carved and grew. When molten heavens thundered and volcanic seas dissolved, mountains ghosted in cloud cathedrals sacred blue, Each ring appalls with the memory of Earth's contortions amidst the scattered whispers of patient boughs, a clarion call to soothe the ocean's ebbing tides. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Trees by Mark Haddon. 
Mark Cadden is a British novelist and poet, best known for his 2003 novel, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Born in 1962 in Northampton, he studied at Merton College, Oxford. Haddon's work spans various genres and audiences, including children's books, poetry and adult fiction. His unique storytelling, often exploring themes of social isolation and the complexity of the human experience, has gained him international acclaim and numerous awards, including the Whitbread Book of the Year Award. Trees by Mark Haddon They stand in parks and graveyards and gardens. Some of them are taller than department stores, yet they do not draw attention to themselves. You'll be fitting a heated towel rail one day and see through the Louvre window a shoal of olive green fish changing direction in the air that swims above the little gardens. Or you awake at your aunt's cottage, your sleep broken by a coal train on the empty hill as the oaks roar in the wind off the channel. Your kindness to animals, your skill at the clarinet, these are accidental things. We lost this game a long way back. Look at you. You're reading poetry. Outside the spring air is thick with the seeds of their children. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.